a protest consultant was brought in and she was showing, and I'm, I'm going to read this to you. She was showing uh, Columbia University students how to protest. Um, what should have been a peaceful protest has basically been co-opted by professional outside agitators. We were extremely cautious about releasing our intel information because our goal was to ensure the safety of the students, the faculty, and without destruction to property. This is the mayor of New York. We have sounded the alarm several times before external actors who attempted to hijack this private protest. Uh, ASU nipped this in the bud. ASU also put out a statement immediately saying, hey, listen, these are not ASU students. There are some students there, but the vast majority of the 70, I think 67 of the 72 people that were arrested at ASU were not students at ASU. These are outside agitators. So I want you to hear a protester at Columbia um, this protester at Columbia is upset, and this shows you, again, you want to talk about privileged people. These are students on a campus. Why should, why is it that they should bring in, why is Columbia University, these students and protesters barricaded themselves in a building, broke windows, broke doors, then they barricaded themselves in the building, and then they began to make demands, and one of them was <clears throat> food and water. Now, why in the world would you think if you barricaded yourself in a room that you should be entitled to food and water? And this is Joanna King Sletsky, and the real name, uh, the Columbia protester. Uh, well, for, first of all, we're saying that they're obligated to provide food to students who pay for a meal plan here. But you mentioned that there was a request to to allow it to be brought in, I mean, well, I guess it's ultimately a question of what kind of community and obligation Columbia feels it has to its students. Um, do you want students to die of dehydration and starvation or get severely ill, even if they disagree with you? If the answer is no, then you should allow basic, I mean, it's crazy to say because we're on an Ivy League campus, but this is like basic humanitarian aid we're asking for. Like, could people please have a glass of water? Basic humanitarian aid could we have a glass of water now you're down for the struggle aren't you these are people that are truly down for the struggle we are willing to suffer what's necessary for our cause you want to know why people mock i will tell you that i am so encouraged with the young people that i work with in this building i'm encouraged by the younger generation this is why people are discouraged by the next generation um, if you talk to some of the protesters in the 1960s, go and talk to people that marched in civil rights marches in the 1960s. These students have spent an hour or two. First of all, they broke into a building. They broke in. They barricaded themselves in. And now they're saying, can we please have a glass of water? Look how mean you're being. What kind of a community do you want here at Columbia? Don't you want the kind where we can sit outside any building we want and put up tents? and say and do death to the Jews and all these other things and fly the Hamas flag. And then when you come in to punish us, we break into buildings and barricade ourselves inside and you horrible people aren't gonna provide us with water and food. So reporters go kind of, this reporter continues to push back on the answer that somehow the school is obligated to fulfill their meal plan requirements, even though the students have committed crimes and broken into buildings. But they, well, they, they did put themselves in that, very deliberately, in that situation and in that position. So it, it seems like you're sort of saying, we want to be revolutionaries, we want to take up this building, now would you please bring us food and water? And Nobody's asking them to bring anything. Every, we're, we're asking them to not violently stop us from bringing in basic humanitarian doing, aid. They're stopping the delivery of food? I, we are looking for a commitment from them that they will not stop oh, it but violently. they haven't stopped it yet. We, well, I don't, I'm not, I don't know to what extent it has been attempted, but we're looking for a commitment. So we don't want them to stop it. Well, they stopped it yet? Well, we, we don't know. We don't know. So they haven't stopped bringing anybody bringing you food and water. Well, we're looking for a commitment and basic humanitarian aid. I want you to think about what's happening. No matter what side of the issue you're on, I want you to think about what's happening in Ukraine I want you to think about what's happening in Gaza. I want you to think about what's happening in other parts of the world, whether it's through famine or it's through war or what it's from. Real human suffering. And they're talking about breaking into a building. 
Why don't they just demand Starbucks? Why don't they just make the demand for Starbucks? The, and she calls it basic humanitarian aid. Are you kidding me? This, I mean, again, this shows you the sheltered existence where people get so closed into their ideology. And it wouldn't matter what side of the argument they're on here. They broke into a building and within a couple of hours are calling it humanitarian aid. You haven't had a drink of water in a couple of hours. There are people that haven't eaten in days. That's humanitarian aid. This is absolutely, it shows you the elitist mentality of some people. This is, the, she is fulfilling every stereotype there is about a college student and how they behave and how sheltered they are and elitist. They pretend as if they're not the elites and they are absolutely the elites in this country. This is embarrassing, absolutely embarrassing. Let's go to another protest. This had UT Austin talking about arrest. This is Jim Ryan at ABC. Austin police say they've caught demonstrators with rocks, clubs, chains, and guns. But Maria Warren Hernandez, who was arrested Monday, says... I haven't seen anything that resembled violence. It's always been about peacefully protesting and making a point. She acknowledges that she is not a student at UT. University administrators say that of the 79 people arrested Monday, 45 had no campus affiliation. So again, these are people infiltrating campuses. We've seen this in many other movements and they've happened before. These are ad outside agitators ginning up problems on universities where there isn't a problem. ASU did a great job of arresting people and telling them you'll be arrested on this campus. Uh, again, you look at how long this has gone on. They brought in, this woman has been arrested 80 times. Not the voice you just heard, I, the one I alluded to earlier. A woman has been arrested 80 times in her life for protesting various causes around the country. This now it's 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 free Palestine. Other times it's been climate change. It's but she calls herself a professional protester, a protest consultant. And there's video of her showing them how to chant, showing them how to behave, showing them how to barricade doors. I can't help you with that in one of the videos. I can't help you with that, but you need to flip it against the doors this way. And she's consulting them on how to protest and barricade themselves in buildings. If that's not embarrassing, I don't know what is. Thanks for watching the Mike Broomhead Show. Tap to watch the first season of Amazing Arizonans, a KTAR News podcast. You can also click the button in the middle to subscribe.